Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this podcast, I'm going to show you how to compare DNA sequences and then using that comparison to understand evolutionary relationships. And so that's a mouthful. And so basically, what am I talking about? Well, one of the biggest revolutions in biology, especially over the last 50 years, has been the idea that we can sequence DNA. So these are gene or DNA sequencers down here. Basically, they can figure out the letters in the DNA. And then we can compare DNA from different organisms. So we've sequenced the human genome, but we're also working on other animals. And so basically that would allow us to see how re related we are, for example, to a panda bear. And so before we talk about the DNA sequencing, let's talk about evolution. And so let's say I found these seven pretend creatures, and we were to put them on an evolutionary family tree. So we call that a cladogram. And let's say we put E up here. Could you put the other ones on this cladogram in the correct order? And so pause the video for a second and then try that. Okay, the right answer, if we were to put them in the right order, might be something like this. And so we have adaptations that are added over time. And what does this mean? Well, E is most closely related to F. This would be a common ancestor between the two. And this would be a common ancestor between all of the organisms on this cladogram. Um, this would be a lineage just unique to E right here. Um, time kind of goes in this direction. And so that's an evolutionary family tree. And here's an example of one that you belong to. So you are a human. So you're way over here on this side. And then we can look at how you're related to a gorilla or a orangutan or even a loris down here. Now there's an idea when people look at cladograms like this that somehow humans are always up at the top because we're the most highly evolved. That's silly. Um, if a loris was giving this podcast to you right now, the loris would put uh, himself right up here and then compare it to the other ones across. And so there's nothing unique. It's just basically we're saying this is an organism and how related is it to other primates. Now, could you do it with this one? So this time I'm just giving you the DNA of the organisms and it's a shortened version, so just 12 letters. And so could you make a cladogram like this? And let's put the blue DNA right up here so you could write the letter B here. So could you figure out what DNA is related to that um, blue DNA? And so you could put, you know, letters, G for green or whatever, R for red, and try to put those across. And so again, pause the video now. Okay, so what's the right answer going to be? Um, well, basically when you're comparing DNA, the easiest way to do that is to line it up. And when you line it up, we can see mistakes or changes, not mistakes per se, but changes between the DNA. So you can see that between here and here, they're not the same. That means there was a mutation through time. And so basically we look strand after strand. So if we compare the blue to the yellow, these two letters are different between the two. And so only 83% or 10 of the 12 letters in the yellow match that of the blue. And so let me move the yellow out of the way. Now let's look at the green. How many differences are there between the green and the blue? Well, only one difference, and so we would say that is 92% similar. Let's look at the red, and you can see that that's quite a bit different. So that would be 67% similar. So let's put that way down here on the bottom. And now we look at the purple, and that's going to be 75% similar. And so if we were to compare the blue to the blue, it's going to be 100% the same. And so if we put all of those in order, like this, we can see who's related to whom. And then, if we were to give those letters and put a cladogram, so you should have had an answer that looks something like this. And so what's the take-home message? If we put DNA up here, the percent similar is going to show you the relatedness. In other words, since red is only 67% similar, that means that it diverged from this lineage that eventually goes to the blue. And so when you say that the chimpanzee is 96% the same as the human DNA, what we're looking at is comparing the DNA and saying uh, it's more like that of us than it is like a gorilla or an orangutan. Okay, so in this um, podcast for the rest of the time, I'm actually going to show you how to do some of this DNA comparison. And so we're going to use two websites, and so you could do this along with me. I've created some shortcuts for it, and so we're going to be using the National Center for Biotechnology Information, or the NCBI, and then we're going to use a subset of that called the BLAST portion. And so I've created little shortcuts for it, and so you can put these in two tabs in your browser, so let me show you how to do that. Okay, so we're going to go to our first tab, and we're just going to type bit.ly slash DNA BLAST. One, and if you hit that, it's going to take us to this NCBI. And then let's put in the other tab, the other bit.ly, so it's bit.ly slash DNA blast two. And it's going to bring us to that blast. And so you're going to have these two websites that we'll use. And so now basically all you do is let's start with the first one. Let's look up a gene. And so we want to look up a human gene because we're going to compare us to other organisms. So I'm going to put human. 
And then we're going to use a gene called actin. Actin is found in muscles. It works with myosin. And so after I've searched that, it's going to give me a lot of, you know, 4,260 genes, just like Google, that are related to that. But this first one's going to be this filament A of the actin protein. So I'm going to click on that right here, and it's going to bring me more information. So it's going to have information about it, summary articles. It tells me where it's found on the chromosomes. But what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down until we eventually find this, which is NCBI reference sequences. And we're going to look under, since we're looking uh, for the nucleotide, we're going to look under this M N mRNA, and we're going to click on this first one right here. So this is going to be that message that eventually makes that protein. So now we've gotten closer to that. And so what you're going to do is click on FASTA right here. And FASTA is basically a gene or a DNA sequencing program. And so now this looks familiar. So what do we have here? We've got the DNA of this one protein. And you can see a poly A tail right down there on the bottom. So let's kind of copy that. So I'm going to copy that. And then we're done with that first website. And so now we're going to go to the BLAST. So you could search for any protein that you know, and you could figure out the DNA of it using this. So now let's go to the BLAST site right here, and we are going to do a nucleotide BLAST. That means we're going to search for nucleotides. In this case, we're looking for that um, DNA sequence. So now we're going to paste it right in here. So I'll paste that. Um, we can do some changes right here. We could just look for human uh, comparisons, but I'm going to click right here for others as well because we want other organisms. And we could search for highly similar sequences, or if we want to make it so that we get a, a lot more results, we could change this to somewhat similar. So again, we pasted it here. If you want to give this a title, so we could call this human actin, it'll keep track of, of ones that you've done, and so you can go back to searches that you've done, so you could search a number of different proteins. And now we're just going to click on this blast right here. So now what is it doing? Well, basically it's going to this NCBI website, and it's going to compare the DNA sequence that we've provided with all of the other DNA sequences that they have in their database. And so you can see that this is taking a little bit of time, but basically what it's doing is it's going through their entire website, and it's looking for any matches between those DNA. And it seems like that took a long time, but it's amazing how much data it's crunching right there. And so basically it's, it's brought back 131 hits, so 131 sequences that match up with that. And so if we start looking at those, we'd find um, right over here is going to be the max uh, identical. In other words, what's the maximum amount that's identical to that? And so basically, as that percent drops off, then it's less like that um, sequence of DNA that we had. And so we can see Homo sapiens up here, but as we start to move down, we can find the dog. Or as we move farther down to less similar, we see a horse. Um, we could look at some other ones, like what are some of these? If we look at this one, like Alleropoda, Alana, and Luca. So let me see what that is. So you could just search that. If you search that in Google, oh, that's the panda bear, so the giant panda. And so that is going to be the protein that's found in them. And so each of these you could go find more information about. And you can go farther down. You can see this is a huge page. Basically, this would be that first gene that they found. And they're laying the DNA right up next to it. And you can see that these are all matches all the way down. So this is going to be a 100% match. Now let me grab the scroll bar and go all the way down to the bottom. And so this is going to be farther down. We're going to find DNA that's similar, but it doesn't match up perfectly. And so this would be another sequence. You can see if we zoom right in here, this is going to be that panda bear right here. You can see that some of the DNA matches up, but some of it doesn't. And so there have been mutations over time. And so let me show you what we can do with that. So basically, let me go all the way up to the top because we want to find some evolutionary significance. And so a neat thing you can go to is this, which is a, um, a distance tree of results. So I'm going to click on that. And when I click on that, it's going to show me all of those 131 blasts that I found, and then it's going to show those along one of these evolutionary cladograms or these evolutionary trees. And if you change it to slanted, it's going to look very similar to those first ones that we made with this one gene found right here, and then things that are like that, like these Homo sapiens here, but things that are less like that. So monotremes, for example, or egg-laying mammals are going to be farther off to the side. And so we created a little... Um, cladogram just for that one gene, but we could do a number of genes and we could start to figure out the evolutionary uh, significance. And so what's amazing about this is that there's a hum huge amount of data out there and you have it all available to yourself. You just go out there, start searching for genes, and you can uh, start to figure out these relationships. And so that's DNA, that's sequencing, and I hope that's helpful.